beautiful day outside and uh, I would you know recommend that you take advantage of the sunshine and uh, be outside it's really important to go outside and, and get the sun on your on your face on your skin and um, you know breathe in the fresh air so we'll do a little bit here I'll open up to questions and and then we'll wrap it up um, if you do have any questions about what I'm going to talk about or anything, um, as always, you can just ask me at any time. I'll check it out in the chat and I'll keep that on there so you guys can see. Um, and then we'll get into it. OK, so. Talking about confidence today. Uh, seems to be a topic which. Since I came back to the UK, um, a lot of people have been talking about and I suppose it's nothing to do with me coming back. It's just the. The timing of it was as um, England was coming out of COVID, uh, as you know, most places around the world were, and the, the the timing of it was that we were getting back to face to face things, um, <clears throat> back to basketball. And um, just a second, sorry. Yeah back to basketball, back to face-to-face -face training, back to competition. And most of us had been uh, kind of locked away in our rooms or our houses for a long time under quarantine or, or lockdowns. And um, I think during that time, there, there was a, this was really difficult for young people, especially, um, you know, for p people like me who a bit older and somewhat used to working uh, on the computer and online uh you know it's not too bad but uh i think for for you guys you missed a season and a half i think it was maybe even two seasons of playing basketball uh, two you know a year and a half two years of real school of being around people your age of interacting with other people and then all of a sudden we're in our houses uh we're not allowed to talk to other people and then the screen you know the phone and the laptop and the ipad and the TV become our best friends. And, um, you know, I, I, I engage with social media a lot more than I than I did um, at that time. And I think that it can be something which can be really positive. There are lots of great things that many people are sharing on social media that can help us to make sense of our lives and what we're trying to do. Um, and also a lot of people are helping um, others for free. Um, but there is also a presentation on social media that that your life is perfect and that the people that you are looking at are all doing great things and you know you you might watch that and think well you know my life isn't so good and we have a tendency to present to other people the positives and the strengths of ourselves and we tend to hide away you know the the vulnerabilities and the things that we're not so strong at and um you know it's um it can be difficult to process that if you're sitting at home and you're looking at everybody else and everybody else seems to be doing all right and then you're struggling uh it can put you in a it can you know kind of throw more rocks on you and um and and you can put yourself into a, a negative situation and think that you are when you're coming out of that and you get into basketball practices and get into the games you you may think that your progress was somehow stalled or hindered because uh, because of this and that other people were actually finding a way to get it done. And that may be true to some extent. You know, some people may have done a really good job of taking on the situation and and um, and, and, and making the best of it, which we all have to do. We all would benefit from from trying to do that at all times, you know, take the situation as it is. If you are an under 16, under 18, if you're not doing that anymore, you're older than that, um, and you're in the conference or your premier or you're in the top level or the bottom level, um, you like your coach or you don't like your coach, you like your teammates, you don't like your teammates. I mean, you know, all, all the situations that you have, if you're in the game and you're losing or you're winning, like you have to take the situation as it is and try to make the best of it. So um, my first message, I think, is that confidence comes from within you all right it is not something which you are going to go and get from somewhere else you have it inside of you all of us 
and I think mostly this is a question of accessing it and, and some of us have kind of buried it away there somewhere and as I say you know during COVID that may have been a time where that 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 went bad you know you your confidence may have dipped especially as you came out of it you came out of COVID and you've played this season and maybe you haven't done as well as you wanted to and COVID may have been a contributing factor you know it might have been a, one of the reasons why that happened because you didn't practice you weren't practicing enough you weren't around other people to train, to play, to compete, to understand how your competition is doing. You may not have access to baskets and and and, and the court and and training and coaching and all those things. And that's all true. Um, but you know, for most people, that is true. And and so as we come out of that, we get back into it. And now you are where you are. Okay, you are where you are. It's really important whenever you're trying to do something, um, it, it, whether that's improve your confidence which we're talking about right now or as that is kind of as a part of trying to be successful and trying to be happy and trying to do well you can only begin to do that from where you are so the first um, stage of improving your confidence if that's what you want to do is accepting the situation that you find yourself in okay so Again, whatever level you're at, whatever position you play, whatever skills you have, however you did in the games, you know, in the last week or month or year, uh, that has happened. And now you are where you are. And many of us in England are in the summertime and we're getting ready to start improving for trials and for next season. And so our starting place has to be, who am I? Where am I? What have I done? What am I doing? And um, what skill sets do I have? And so that is a, a wonderful place to begin, all right? <clears throat> um, and then before I forget this, when we're talking about confidence, you know, if you, if you are a person who would like to improve their confidence, when you wish for that, when you wish for better confidence or wish to be more self-confident, what you are not wishing for is for people to praise you and encourage you and and say nice things about you although that feels good and it is um it is necessary and it is useful uh sometimes to have people say nice things about you really if we if you really want to improve your confidence this is not what you are after all right uh and i will explain that uh right now I heard, uh, I think it was um, Morgan Freeman say this. He said, if you, if you want confidence, if you want to improve your confidence, you've got to put yourself in positions where you get to practice. And the only places really where you get to practice being confident are in ones where you're not sure how things are going to turn out. You know, you might be in situations where you don't know if you're going to win the game or not. You don't know if you're going to be able to do what your coach is asking of you or not. You don't know if you're going to be able to beat the other team or the other player. You don't know if you're going to be accepted by your teammates or the people that you are spending time with. You don't know any of that stuff. And that's where we can be less confident is we go into situations where we are uncomfortable, what we, that we don't like to be there because maybe I'm like, like if you're going to go into a trial, whether it be for a, a national league team or um, the region or the national team, you know, you don't necessarily know anybody. Imagine going into a trial where you don't know any of the players, you don't know any of the coaches, and it's on you to stand out. <clears throat> you know, if you if you struggle with that stuff, that's really hard because uh, you, you're going to have a lot of mental chatter going on, going, oh, I shouldn't be here. You know, what if things go don't go well? Oh, uh, you know, maybe I just get this over with or not even do it you know why did I even come and um it but it's in these moments where you know th there is possibility right because what you are kind of banking on is that you fail uh um so that you know the the chatter in your head can confirm what it is that you thought would happen and you can just go back and say well I shouldn't try anymore because I never am able to achieve something. But actually, you know, these are the places where if you can appreciate that, 
if you can be really thankful for being in a position where you don't know people or you don't know what's going to happen, then you are, there, you are open to possibility. And one of those possibilities is that you meet other people that have the same interests as you, the same goals as you, and you think you work out that actually a lot of these people here are the same as me. You know, they want to be on the national team or they want to be on the, the national league team, you know, uh, or they just want to play basketball to a high level and they actually want the same things I do. Uh, but, and they, and they're, feel, they're feeling the same way I do. And when you break down those barriers and you start to get to know somebody else within that environment, you realize that we're all trying to do the same thing, but because we're all kind of closed off and we're not sure, you know, how everybody else is thinking, maybe everybody else is more confident than me. Uh, we tend not to come out of our shell and try um, because, you know, the risk of looking silly or people, you know, not thinking we're good or cool or anything like that is high uh, because you don't know, you just don't know the, the result. So I come back again, like there's no, there is no uh, replacement. There is no replacement for these experiences. Uh, if you want to build confidence, you, uh, I've been here before, man, and, and you, you, I'm sorry, but I just have to keep saying this, basically the same thing. You have to keep pushing to put yourself into situations that you are not that comfortable in. And, um, you know it's a it's a but but maybe i can help you hopefully i'm not i don't want to put i don't want to put people off by saying that what i want to say is like you don't have to you know you're not going to go try out for an nba team like if you're 15 years old but you you might go try out for a national league team you might try to get into the southeast region or wherever you are in the country like or you might go to the park because you've seen somebody really really good down there and you might challenge them to a one-on-one like find an appropriate level of scared for you and go there and say, right, my goal today is to do something which I wouldn't ordinarily do because I'm kind of afraid of what might happen. Like we can all, if we're basketball players, we can all go to the park and we scope out somebody and they don't look very good. And then we can go over there and play one-on-one -on -one with them uh, because we're pretty sure we're going to win. Like we can all do that. But it's the times when you see people that are actually good and, and you're like, wow, actually, they can move a little bit. They're pretty good. They can shoot the ball. I'm not sure if I would beat them or not. That's when it becomes a little bit more difficult to go over and say, would you like to play? You know, and uh, as the summertime comes in scrimmages, you know, this is um, the opportunity to, to, to make a very, very small baby step in that direction um, to put yourself out there and, and, and in positions where you are a little bit uncomfortable. All right. And so when you do that, um, Imagine this, you, you, you get to a place where, you know, I know the people that are on this call, most of them, uh, you're going to be in a trial in like two weeks time. Um, before you start doing anything, like before you walk in the door, just stop. And you can do a few different things. Like, first of all, you can remind yourself that this only happens once a year. And this is a, a really good opportunity to test yourself like at the end of the day tests are only uh useful as a way of telling you where you are at the moment that it's not like if you fail that your life is finished and that you know doors are closed forever it, it should never be like that tests and trials and examinations and 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 you know finals they are they are not final you know they are not because all you get is an opportunity to see where are you right now. And yes, you might fail to do what you were trying to do on that day, but that means that you now you have some information. Okay. You have some information to move forward with. And with that, you can make a plan on how you might get back to the place um, that you were at just then or in a different place in the future so that you can try again as long as it means something to you and uh and you are young which we all are you know even as i get older i'm still young and there's still opportunities that i will go after and i will um and i will face and they might not be an under 18 trial but you know for me it's different 
um, different challenges, but ultimately it's all the same. You know, I'm, I get uncomfortable, I get scared, uh, you know, I get the butterflies. Um, but then, so before I go in the door, it's to say, wow, this is a really good chance to to test myself and to see if all the work that I did is going to pay off. Uh, it's also an opportunity to meet new people or reconnect with people that either I knew before and have seen around or and not for some time or you know reconnect with people that I played with last season and to see how they are doing all right and then some kind of exercise you might do uh, which can just bring you to the present moment yeah because a lot of the times with confidence uh, if you are lacking this it, it can mean that you are in your own head okay you are talking to yourself about the potential problems and failures and you know horrible things that might happen should you not do well so you are saying oh you know what if i get crossed what if i don't score what if i don't impress the coaches what if i don't make the team what if i don't even get on the court you know what if i get on the wrong team and now we're we're a terrible team and i don't get to showcase my skills you know so many things that your brain is telling you you know this could happen and that could happen and remember last time we were here it didn't go, go that well like okay get yourself into the moment you know and you know one easy way to do that is shut your mouth shut your eyes breathe in through your nose and when you're breathing in you say i am breathing in in your head you say i am breathing in and then when you breathe out you say i am breathing out and you might do that again I am breathing out. Yeah, and it's a wonderful practice for letting go of all of the peripheral stuff, all of the stuff that's distracting you and telling you that things are going to go wrong and you just come back into your body and you remember that you're just, you know, in space and you're here doing this right now and then later on you're going to be having dinner. So um, things are not that big of a deal, all right? So I'm now going to run through, um, if there's any questions at this point, uh, please type them in the chat. I'm going to run through a few things uh, which I think can help you guys to develop your confidence. And, um, and then, and then we'll, we'll finish with some questions um, unless anybody has any right now. Okay. Uh, right. So going back to the COVID thing, um, my first suggestion for you guys to improve your confidence is to set boundaries around your phone use okay so one of the things that can help you to be a great basketball player is your daily habits with regard to how you take care of yourself all right so what am i talking about the food that you eat the fluid that you take in your sleep and um you know maybe your rest as well you know, sleep and rest are can be different all right and so if I, if I talk about sleep, like sleeping is really important for developing uh, skills and attributes and recovery for your physical body. If you do not get quality sleep, then the training that you do on Monday is not, the potential of that is not going to be realized on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and so on. Because it's when you sleep and when you rest that the work that you did before, your body starts to recover and starts to get um, information and protein to the cells in your muscles or in, in your brain to um, activate change, all right? So if you are in the gym squatting and trying to get stronger, in the gym is where the breakdown happens, right? In the gym is where the, 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 the muscles are kind of torn apart. And then in the rest, time in the evening when you're resting and the night time and then the maybe a day after that as well when you are not doing anything is when your muscles are taking in nutrients they are, they are the, the the chemical processes are happening to rebuild the muscles to make them stronger in anticipation of the next time that you will do that all right so if you take that to basketball practice if you train a lot then the training is good but then the rest time that you take after that is important for your brain to process the information. So if you're learning new plays, for example, or you're learning a new move and you practiced it, 
Now your brain needs to take that information that you learned here and it needs to process it so that you can then move forwards later. And that's what happens with improvement. You don't improve usually in one session. It takes a series of sessions where you learn, you rest, you repeat, you learn a bit more and you rest and then you start to be able to execute. All right, so the rest periods are really important. So why is setting boundaries on your phone important? Because your phone use is going to affect your rest, all right? If you are somebody who is on your phone until the moment that you go to bed, there are two things that are happening. One, you're being shown social media all the time. You know, all kinds of stuff is coming at you and they're telling you, usually it's telling you, you know, everything is, is great in social media. And so you'll start to think, well, my life isn't that good. And you start, your confidence levels go down. The other thing is something about the light that comes off of the phone is coming into your retina, it's coming into your eyes, and it's lighting up your brain to tell it to be awake. All right? It's telling it to wake up. It's not telling it to sleep. There is a process for going to sleep, which you need to follow, essentially, which means that's why we have to dim the lights. We have to turn the lights off when we go to sleep because um, your brain reacts basically to the sunlight, right? So when the sun goes down and it's gone, your brain is saying to your body, okay, Time to go to sleep, time to start preparing to go to bed. But if you've got your phone in front of you, the light is still there and in your brain doesn't know the difference. So it starts to say, right, well, we've got to stay awake because the light is still on. Yeah. And so this can affect your rest. It will affect your recovery and then it can affect your learning and things like that. So how can you set a boundary with your phone? Set a time to turn it off or stop using it. Okay. And then get it away from you when you're going to go to sleep. Turn it off. Okay. Airplane mode or turn it off whilst you're sleeping all right so as an example stop using it at 8 p.m or 9 p.m okay no more text messages no more social media 8 p.m 9 p.m turn it off put it in the drawer or put it in a different room or leave it downstairs and then go upstairs and get ready for your bedtime routine and take a little bit of time to do that all right the 30 minutes after that your body is taking a little bit of time to adjust to getting ready to sleep, getting ready to rest, and then you can have a more restful night's sleep, all right? And then don't be the first thing that you do. Like, you guys tell me in the chat now, anybody that's on here, uh, what's the first thing that you do when you wake up? The first two things. You can send to me privately if you want. Or not at all. Phone or drink water. Okay. Eat. Get dressed. Have breakfast. Cool. All right. Good. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, we've got a couple of people saying that the first thing might be to go on their phone. All right. And, um, I mean, you know, it's just, it's the same. Yeah. You're, as soon as you go on your phone or your iPad or whatever it is, you are being sent messages about other stuff that's happening everywhere else. And it might, you know, as, as much as some of those messages might be positive, it's still saying stuff like, this is happening over here and you're not doing it. Yeah. And so what is that saying to your brain? It's saying to your, to your, your, your brain might be saying, oh man, you're just not getting after it, you know, and, or you might get some bad news or somebody might tell you something and put you in a bad mood. Like you didn't need that, right? Imagine if the first thing that you did every day was go train in some way, right? Before you look at your phone, go train in some way. I don't care what it is, right? If, if right now the first thing is you do is not train, like it might be eat or look at your phone or do something else. If the first thing that you do is run um, 1K or 5K or round the block, or the first thing that you do is, do some push-ups or, you know, uh, I don't know, ATG zero, you know, some, some exercises, some kind of yoga, like stretching, anything like that. That's a physical exercise, first of all, which is sending positive messages to your brain and your body that you are waking up, you are getting ready to move, you are getting ready to be alive, yeah? If it's your phone or your iPad, it might be, you, you have absolutely no control over what's coming at you, yeah? It might be, a bad message it might be something that terrible has happened or anything like that like it might just it or it might as i say it might be a good message from somebody over like david goggins is running 28 miles every day 
but still that kind of message is saying to me, oh, I'm not doing that and he is, so I'm worthless, you know? Um, so Goggin says that actually, like, don't look at your phone first thing in the morning, man. Have a routine for that. Go do your work. Win the morning, yeah? Um, Victor said to drink water, which is a great thing. Yeah, that's one thing which I've noticed in young players recently is drinking water, and it does have to be water, is so good, especially in the morning, right? That's going to help you to hydrate because a lot of us are not drinking water. We are drinking Lucozade or orange juice or squash or something like that. And you have to understand that that is not water, even though it's got water in it. Uh, that is not um, as effective at hydrating you and getting you ready for the day as drinking water is. All right, so there you go. Second uh, recommendation is to write. Okay, I know many of you will be going to school. Many of you will be maybe not enjoying uh, writing stuff for things like English or maths or science or anything like that and maybe see it as a bit of a chore. But writing is a very effective way for processing your thoughts and setting out plans and action, you know, uh, goals and plans for the future, okay? Um, because in your head, there's a lot of stuff going on, yeah? There's a lot of things happening. You're thinking a lot of things. You are worrying about some stuff that happened before or stuff that's coming up. You are thinking about your plans and maybe it's all here, there and everywhere. If you can write it down, you have a record of it and also you can start to make a sense of it. OK, so a few things that you could write which would help you with your confidence. Number one is a daily journal. Very simple. Just write down anything about what happened in your day that day. OK, that, that is a, you know, a fundamental uh, way to begin writing, especially if you don't know what you want to write, uh, is you just start writing. And I guarantee you something will come out, uh, whether it's whether you don't think it's good or not something will come there and then you might find that if you keep going that you start to you know find some ideas and things that you do want to write about uh, and it's like a practice as well it's a skill so if you're not so good at it in the beginning it's not something to worry about but keeping going is very important all right daily plan be it the night before or the morning what are you going to do today you know are you a basketball player are you going to improve your basketball skills today are you going to improve your fitness today? Are you going to improve your mental attitude today? Or is it about school? Are you going to improve something about that? Some other areas you could look at improving. How are you at home with your parents or your siblings? Could you write a goal down for that, you know, to do better um, at home? Because these kind of things are all the same, okay? If you can learn how to write down a plan of doing something positive, and affecting other people in a positive way, it doesn't really matter what it is. If you're trying to do that at basketball, if you can do it in other areas of your life, it will help you when you try to apply that to basketball. Okay, guys, hold on a second. I got to check on my daughter. Listen. What's up? All right, guys, just give me a second. Right. Sorry. Uh, where were we? Right. Writing out daily plan. Um, so the next thing was uh, you could also write like your feelings for the day. Like what are you going through? Um, whether they are positive or negative, just to write them down will get them out of you and somewhere else. OK. And, you know, if you don't feel comfortable to be able to talk to somebody about these things, be it your parents or your teachers or your coach um, or even your friends or your teammates, 
writing is a way to get them out of here and somewhere else and the expression of that is it can be quite important especially if confidence is one of the things that you're struggling with okay uh review review of a game that you played or the practice that you had or just the day that you had yeah reviewing things is also another way to formulate your ideas and help you to process okay and then goals i think is a wonderful way there's a lot of um, robust science behind goals helping you to direct your attention, your energy, and uh, the things that you do to in, in a positive way. So if you if you and and the reason I put this last of these writing lists is because if you don't know how to set goals and things like that, don't start with that. Like start with writing uh, a daily journal or writing a daily plan and a review. Once you get in the habit of doing that, then you can think about, okay, what do I want to achieve? You know, set a goal for a week or a month, okay? And, and then a goal and then an action plan, uh, understand where you are right now and then do it, okay? And see what happens in a month, yeah? Review that, did you achieve it or didn't you achieve it? Okay, now I understand how this goes. So I'm gonna set a goal for six months or one year. And, and, and this can be, once you start on the road to this, there is there are many avenues avenues you can take and there are many things to learn about setting goals and how it can help you and for each people each person it might be a little bit different but uh, writing is the first i think most important way of getting the thoughts out of your head and down onto a piece of paper some of these ideas might not be that good but you never know one of them might be really cool and and then you can start to direct your attention towards that all right uh, and then, so with regard to confidence and like planning for your future and your goals and things like that, uh, um, I don't know. I mean, it, I'm not sure that anyone's really going to believe in you before you believe in yourself. So coming back to the beginning of the of this talk, where I said the confidence is within you. You know, you are all confident. Everyone has confidence within them. You can't go to the shop and buy it. You know, your coach isn't going to give it to you. Your, your teachers aren't going to hand it to you in, a, in, in you know, it's, it's just not coming from outside of who you are. Teachers and coaches and, 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 and people are, that might influence you are going to draw that out of you. They're going to help you to understand and to see that you can be a confident person. All right. But you must, you, you, at some point, the, the best and most effective way of being confident is to recognize that it is within you right and and you know here, here's a way that you can do that right here's a way that you can do that is you can just sit quietly and you can close your eyes and you can say that you are confident you can just say i am a confident basketball player for example i am a confident basketball player i am okay with losing i work hard I try to win, but I understand that this is a competition. All right, so those are some things which you can say, which can recognize that basketball is a game. We're all trying to win, but somebody's going to lose. All right, and a lot of people say, oh, I hate losing and things like that. And, you know, I don't want to be a loser and stuff like that. But that's where the, 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 the lacking in self-confidence comes is people are afraid of being, a, of being labeled a loser of being labeled somebody who can't do something. And then you identify with that. You, you know, people call you a loser and you start believing it, right? Whereas confident people understand that losing is a part of the game. That actually, if I enter into a game at the appropriate level, like I'm going to try to beat this other team or this other person, I don't know if I'm gonna win. Because that's what this is all about, is we're trying to find out who are you know, who is better and who whose work was more effective and who maybe worked harder or smarter or things like that. So when you can recognize that confidence is not just about success, it's not just about winning, it's about putting yourself out there. It's about showing up, right? Okay, I got a question there, which I'm gonna to get to in a minute. Okay, um, <clears throat> so, yeah, no, just um, a couple of things about losing. Um, so, so losing, right? 
you, some of you guys are in the Sussex Storm and maybe you have been a part of one of the teams this season that were in some finals. Uh, we've had teams this year that won, teams that this year that lost some of the big games, but they were there. Um, we need to reframe losing a little bit. We need to understand that losing is not the end, right? Of course, we don't want to lose. Of course, we don't want to. No one's trying to lose. We're all trying to win. We're trying to work hard. We're trying to put the ball in the basket and we're trying to win the game. But the, the losses, especially in the big games, are fundamental. They are vital for lasting success. Nobody wins all the time. Nobody. Even when you look at teams like professional teams, be it in basketball or any other sport, teams that have sustained success, I promise you that they will not have had that from the get-go, okay? So if you look at Michael Jordan and the Bulls, if you look at LeBron James, okay? If you look at the Golden State Warriors, I mean, the Golden State Warriors, they used to be a terrible team. You know, for years and years and years, they were an awful team, all right? And they took a long time to build that, that group of players and the staff and, and their culture, all right? It takes time and it takes some level of losing for you to understand how to win, all right? So again, nobody wants to lose, no one's trying to lose, but it is very, very helpful in understanding how to overcome uh, an opponent when you know, you know what it feels like to lose, what you had to do to win the game, um, you know, it can really help you, all right? Um, okay, uh, and then a couple of other things here. Study your craft, all right? So. The more you understand about your game, the more you understand about basketball, um, the easier it's going to be to be confident, right? Because if you understand how players move on the court, if you understand the concepts that your coaches are putting out on the floor, if you understand what your teammates and the opponent are trying to do, you can relate to them and you can talk to them and you can communicate and that's going to help you. And in, in that, Will, it, will, it will bring that confidence out of you, yeah? If you have no idea what's going on because you don't watch basketball, all you do is watch highlights and, you, you know, you don't understand the, the deeper levels of the game, then, yeah, I mean, you, you might struggle at the higher levels and then you can say, well, you, you know, it's because you're not confident or it, maybe you just don't know enough. Maybe you're just not taking enough time to study the game and yourself and, and what it takes to move to the levels and, and also then putting in the work. Um, okay, finally, uh, my final suggestion is to meditate, okay? Uh, meditation is a simple practice, which is very, very, very difficult um, because we have so many things going on in our lives now more than ever. So many things are trying to grab our attention and uh, it's, it's really hard to, to, to develop a meditation practice which you could do every day. And all you have to do is a few minutes every day. But, you know, even I struggle with that um, these days. And so, but why, why is that important? Because meditation um, is a gateway. It is a key to understanding that the thoughts that are running through your head, on, they don't have to be who you are. Okay, so those negative thoughts that are running through your head about who, how bad you are and how you're not going to make it and how you can't do this and you can't do that and that person is better and all that kind of stuff, if you if you can start to develop a meditation practice then you can start to understand that those thoughts they can come and you can look at them and then you can start to let them go and you can realize that there is somebody watching the thoughts and that person is the one you want to access because that person can be very very confident understanding that the thought about being a negative player is it can you can let it go all right so um I will, you know, endeavor in, 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 the, in the coming weeks and months to try to help you with that. But um, I've posted a few things on my social media about form shooting. Okay, form shooting can be a meditation for you, is a way to learn how to meditate. All right, so here's how you can do it. You stand in front of a basket with a ball and you just do one hand or two hand shooting uh, at the basket. Do it in silence and you count in your head uh, up to 10 using the baskets. Okay, so when you make one basket, you count one, you make one basket, you count two, and you go all the way up to 10. When you get to 10, you come back to zero, and you go one, and then you go two, all the way up to 10, and then you come back down to zero. Okay, you're doing this in silence, right next to the basket, right in front of it. 
Um, and what you are doing is training your mind to concentrate because what you might find is that you might lose your concentration and start thinking about something else. And at that moment is when you can bring it back. Okay, when you realize, when you realize that you started thinking about something else and you've forgotten the count, you can bring it back and then you can get back to the count again. All right. And that is the skill of concentration. All right. Which, which is, again, it's going to help you with your confidence because if you're engaged, if you are aware, if you know what is going on, then you're not going to get caught out as much. And when we get caught out, whether it be by our coaches or we miss something in the game and then somebody scores, that, can ha that, that, that makes it more difficult for us to be confident because we're, you know, we're not doing so well. Okay. So if you're more engaged, then you're going to be less of those, those errors. All right. Okay. There is a question. Um, how to uh, show your ability uh, around other players who might already, you know, in your opinion, be more confident. Um, so that's the first question. So, I mean, I, I think the first, pick, first thing to recognize, and it is, it is true, that even just because somebody's loud doesn't necessarily mean that they are confident, all right? Uh, sometimes people can, can be loud and talk a lot and look very confident precisely because they are not confident, that they need to show you that they are this confident, you know, strong person, because if they, if you really knew that they were worried about all kinds of stuff, then they, they wouldn't be able to face you. Okay. So everybody's dealing with this to some extent or another. And, and, and if you can realize that you realize, as I said before, that you are, we are all the same, you know, we are all trying to do well. We all want to have success. We all want to, um, yeah, we all want to have those things and we want to see progress in our lives. So, but we also are a little bit all insecure. Yeah, we're not sure how things are going to go. So how to be, um, uh, how to show your ability uh, is, is, is just to show who you are, is to not, not be afraid of who you are. You know, because no matter what anybody says about you, no matter what anybody says about you, it, 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 doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to be your definition of who you are. So if you are around other players that you think are confident and they're somehow saying something about you, then they're not confident because real confident people want to bring other people up. They don't want to put other people down. Okay, so it's about showing who you are by showing who you are, the good things and the bad things, and just going out and, and, and playing the game, you know, because at the end of the day, ask yourself, would you do you really want to be here? You know, do you really enjoy playing basketball? Because if you do, then then do it. Enjoy being out there and playing the game and let the chips fall where they may. Okay. The second part of that question is when you're in a situation where you're underdog, how do you boost your confidence in the moment? Uh, I, I mean, I, I think it's easier to be the underdog than, than to be the person that is expected to win. You know, um, you don't have anything to lose. If you're the underdog, you don't have anything to lose. If you lose, everybody would expect it anyway. So it's when you are expected to win that it, things are actually a little bit difficult because you're going to have to make sure that you win just to maintain your status. Okay, but again, this is outside perception. All right, this is the perception from other people. And there is a difference between the perception of other people and the inside reality. Okay, so who's to say to you are the, you're the underdog? That's just people talking. All right, when we go to play basketball, Let's go to play basketball. And again, as I said before, you do your best. You show your ability. You try your hardest, and you let the chips fall where they may. And if you lose, okay, now you have some information, you know, to to go forwards with and and to improve on. All right. Any other questions? Anybody else? Need you need a tissue? Yeah. Okay, well, you're going to have to go somewhere else, darling. Because I don't have one. Okay, guys, I'm not seeing any questions. So 
So hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, a few, okay. So to review, um, there were a few suggestions that I made for improving confidence. All right, first of all, before I make those suggestions and summarize them again, is to remember that confidence comes from within you. You are not going to get it from somewhere else. All right, uh, to come back to the encouragement point, right? So about pe people encouraging you and saying nice things about you. Um, okay, this is, this is nice and, and, and sometimes it, it can be important, only, only when, when you are in the struggle, okay? Sometimes you get to a point where you're working quite hard and you're doing things which you know will bring you success, but your body starts to get tired or you're not seeing any results. You know, you might go a long time if you're training and you're trying to achieve something where you're trying to, um, trying to you're getting after it, you're waking up early, you're writing, you're, you're setting your goals, you're getting after everything and you're not really seeing the results or you're, have, you're experiencing some failure. Um, this is when encouragement from people that you value and you respect can be really helpful, all right? So that's why it's really important to surround yourself with good people um, and there are people in, 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 around you that will be able to help you, all right? So identify who those people are, stay close to them. And if you need them, you know, ask them. All right. Remember, confidence is within you. Do the work, set your plan, keep going. Don't give up. All right. And, and then at some point you may need a little bit of encouragement just to remind you that, yes, you're on the right path. You're doing well, but don't make your confidence dependent on encouragement and praise from other people. All right, so a little bit about that question that was asked there. Like, if you're around other confident people, like, what do you want from them? You, know, you, you don't, you can't be validated by other people for you to be confident, okay? Confidence is not that, yeah? Confidence is something which you have within you and it is a belief that you are doing the right thing. And winning and losing will not tell you that. Winning and losing is not always going to tell you whether you are doing the right thing or not. Because if you are working and you're trying hard, as maybe a lot of other people are, then sometimes you're going to have to take losses, which are going to tell you how to adjust or how to change your plan a little bit or how to just to keep going. Because like, you know, I've been in games this year and you've all been in games this year where you were just that ah, little, that's a little bit more or one different decision or one more play would have helped you to get across the line. OK, and, and, you know, that's the game. So confidence is the self-belief that, yes, actually, we're on the right path. We're doing the right thing. I'm doing the right thing. And I just need to keep going because um, people that do keep going, you know, there's not many of them. All right. So if you stay the course, you will you will improve. OK, and, and then through the improvement will come that confidence that you have within you and that you can express through lifting other people up. I think another misconception with that question is that, you know, confidence is not something that you're supposed to show everybody. You're not supposed to show everybody how confident you are by being all bravado and uh, being all, you know, happy and this kind of stuff. You show confidence in yourself by helping other people, by accepting losing, by winning graciously, by playing hard, by training, you know, well, and by, by being consistent. All right. So uh, that's really important. And then a few things that we talked about, setting boundaries around your phone habits so that you can get good rest is really important. Getting good sleep and then also good habits when you wake up. Writing, a lot of things that you can write um, which can help you to process your thoughts and start to set out goals for yourself. Uh, reframing losing so that you understand that losing can be an indicator of your, your ongoing success. So if you are losing something or you lost a game or you didn't do so well, that is one step closer to longer term success and you should keep going. And then finally, uh, two things, study your craft, understand your game, all right, and, and make sure that you, you, you get a, uh, a broader knowledge of what you're doing. 
And finally, uh, meditation practice can, can really help you. All right. So if there's no more questions, guys, I'm going to sign off. Thank you for joining. And I look forward to seeing you again. Say goodbye. Goodbye.